Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing the concept of cellular apoptosis. This is very important for your basic understanding of medicine in general, so you need to know this topic very well. There's going to be a lot of high yield facts we're going to discuss to help you get through your board examination. So with that being said, let's discuss cellular apoptosis by first reviewing cellular injury. Remember, our cells are able to handle a lot of stress, and they've developed ways to adapt to a certain level of stress through either hyperplasia, hypertrophy, or even metaplasia. But what happens when the level of stress that our cells are under well exceeds our cells ability to adapt to that stress. Well, in that situation, you are going to get cell injury. Cell injury occurs when the cell's amount of stress that's being placed upon it exceeds the cell's ability to adapt to that stress. Now, there are many different ranges of injury that you really don't need to know in terms of this lecture you should have in the background. You can watch our video on cell injury to get a better understanding. But one thing you do need to know is that this process usually occurs in a in two main stages. The first stage is going to be the reversible stage where you see cellular swelling. Then, then the second stage is going to be irreversible where you have uh, membrane damage, not just of the cell, but also of the lysosomes and the mitochondria. Once you get to the irreversible stage, you are going to progress to cell death. And this right here is the central dogma of cell injury that you need to know and you need to have a good understanding of for your medical knowledge. So that is cell injury. Now, when you get to the cell death stage, there are multiple ways that your cells can die. They can either go through necrosis, which we've discussed in a previous lecture, or they can go through apoptosis. And in this lecture, obviously, we're going to be discussing apoptosis. So let's just dive right in. Cellular apoptosis is also known as cellular suicide. And this is also considered programmed cell death. And we're going to talk about why it's considered that in a second, but it is programmed cell death. Okay. And the other thing you need to remember is cellular apoptosis is happening at the cell level. Okay. Meaning it's either small cells or, or very uh, few number of cells. When you have, and I'm going to write this, this is apoptosis. Apoptosis. When you have cell death occurring at the tissue level, we call this necrosis, okay? Very important for you to understand the difference between the two. So this mechanism is going to be reliant on ATP. You cannot commit uh, cellular suicide without ATP. And this is a genetically programmed mechanism, meaning there are genes and there are intrinsic factors and there are mechanisms built inside of the cell to kill itself off. Now this can be caused by the cell itself, meaning intrinsic, or it can be done or induced by another cell, meaning extrinsic. And these are just mechanisms we have developed over a lot of time to essentially make sure that we don't have cells that are infected or cancer cells growing rapidly. All right. Now, when it comes to cell apoptosis, like I said, this is going to involve either single cells or small group of cells. When you have tissues that are dying, remember, this is called necrosis. Okay, and an example of apoptosis would be the endometrial lining that sheds during menses. This occurs through apoptosis. It's the CD8 positive T cell mediated cell death when T cells want to kill uh, uh, parts of our cells or parts of our body just because they might be infected. That is a example of extrinsic and then embryogenesis. A lot of people forget about embryogenesis because they think during embryogenesis when the fetus is forming, you're only making new tissue, but you're actually getting rid of a lot of structures at the same time. And that happens through apoptosis and not necrosis. So let's talk a little bit more about apoptosis so you have a better understanding of what's going on. Like I said earlier, apoptosis requires ATP, but it also requires one additional thing, and that is caspase enzymes. So you need ATP for this as well as caspases. Why do you need caspases? Well, caspases are a key mediator of apoptosis because they function to break down the cell uh, cytoskeleton. And they're going to also help with degrading DNA. The way the DNA degrades is a little bit different though. Caspases will then go and activate endonucleases and those endonucleases will cut at the intra internucleosomal regions. Okay, I said a lot. I'm going to take a second. I'm going to explain what this means because right now I'm probably I'm pretty sure you're probably thinking that this is dumb. I don't need to know this. This is not really going to be important for my exam. I get it. 
I know, no one wants to hear this stuff, but this is actually very important because this mechanism, this process is going to give you a very key finding, a hallmark finding, that if you are given this hallmark finding during a test, you should know to think directly about apoptosis, all right? When you break down DNA, because of the endonucleases, when you cut them at the intranucleosomal uh, regions, you are going to get segments of DNA that are multiples of 180 base pairs. That is a very sensitive indicator of apoptosis. And if you haven't already figured out by the text that is bold and italicized, this is very important. This is a very high yield topic. Do not forget this. So, what ends up happening is ATP is going to activate caspases or allow caspases to function properly, okay? Not only are they going to degrade the cytoskeleton, they are also going to activate endonucleases and they are going to break down DNA and you will end up with 180 base pairs. Very high yield. Now, unlike necrosis, the cell membrane is going to remain intact. The reason why is that you are killing the cell from the inside, okay? You are not killing it from the outside. A lot of times necrosis is an extrinsic cause, something outside the cell is happening. So even when you have extrinsic apoptosis occurring, the cell membrane will stay intact. Also, you will not have any inflammation. That is very important because the reason why a lot of times we get inflammation is because the intracellular components get, uh, get essentially get released when the cell membrane get damaged. This does not happen in apoptosis, so you do not see inflammation in the regions where apoptosis is occurring. Now, when it comes to the histologic findings, you are going to see a very deeply eosinophilic cytoplasm and basophilic nucleus. What does that mean? Well, I made it easy for you. Look at this photo on the right side. And if you can't find the, the cell that is going through apoptosis, I made it even easier. There is an arrow pointing to the cell. Okay, so let's look at a normal cell first. You see this cell right here. You can see it's the actual cytoplasm is more on the purple side. Well, this right here, whoops. This cell right here that is actually going through apoptosis, the cytoplasm is very pink. Okay, pink cytoplasm. This is what eosinophilic cytoplasm looks like. And then when you're looking at the nucleus, it looks basophilic, meaning it looks a little bit more, uh, it looks a little bit muted or it looks a little bit harder to tell where it is, right? These nuclei, these ones and these ones and these ones are very clear. You know exactly where the nucleus is. This one, it's kind of hard to tell, right? It looks a little opaque. So that is the basophilic uh, nucleus that we're talking about. Now, in this uh, nucleus, you or in the cell, you're also going to see nucleus breaking down, okay? So you're going to see the process of more pycnosis where the nucleus shrinks and then karyorexis where it becomes fragmented and that's happening because of the endonuclease mediated cleavage and you're going to see the 180 base pair uh, uh, findings of the DNA. Now, there are two main pathways you need to know. You have the intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway. Okay, so you have intrinsic pathway where the cell itself is uh, undergoing apoptosis and then the extrinsic pathway where something outside of the cell is inducing apoptosis uh, for that cell. It's causing the cell to go through apoptosis. These are both very high yield topics that we're going to be discussing in our upcoming lectures. They are going to be lectures in and of themselves, so stay tuned. But both of these pathways activate caspases, okay? That's very important, and they are both going to lead to cellular breakdown, and they're both going to lead to cell apoptosis, cell death. 
Now, in the upcoming lectures, we're going to be discussing these pathways in a lot more detail. But until now, I hope this was helpful. I hope this gave you a good understanding of apoptosis. If it was, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because your support means a lot to us. It allows us to keep this content free. And don't forget to go to our website, www.madmedicine.org, where you can find more free content like this for your educational purposes. Thank you.